I'm going to show you how you can enable Windows Firewall Logging, as well as how you can view the log file. I'm currently doing this on Windows Server, but this works exactly the same on the Windows Desktop Edition. So to start, if we open up the Start menu and type wf.msc, that will take us to the Windows Defender Firewall Management Console. In here, we can right-click the Windows Defender Firewall and come to Properties, and then in the Properties window, under Logging, we can enable logging. So if we select Customize, we can set where we want to store a log file, we can set the size of the log file, and then what we want to log. So by default, it doesn't log anything. However, what we can do is we can set it to log drop packets, and we can set it to log successful connections. What I would recommend is leaving these off by default and only really turning them on when it's needed when you're trying to diagnose any firewall issues. So if you're trying to diagnose a firewall issue, the one that you'd want is the log drop packets. So we can click the drop down and then select yes to log any packets that get dropped. And we can also increase the size. So if we just set this to 40,000, it will set it to the maximum size of 32 megabytes. By default, the log file is stored in C, Windows, System32, log files, firewall, and then a file called pfirewall.log. So I'm just going to leave that as default. However, you can change it to store the log somewhere else. So I've just set this up for the domain profile. I'm also going to select the private profile and then just make the same changes here. And then set it to log drop packets. And then the same with the public profile. Set that to 40,000 and then select yes to log the dropped packets. Once we've got that set, we can press OK, and that will apply those settings. And then what we need to do is now is browse to C, Windows, System32, Log Files, and then under Firewall, we should have a firewall.log. When we open this, we should see that it's blank, because nothing has been logged yet, and it can take a few seconds after the firewall has dropped the packet for it to appear in the log. So if I just close this log file and then come over to a separate server and then what I'll do is I'll just make some connection requests that I know will be blocked to that initial server so we can get some lines added to the log. So if I just try to ping that server, I know that ICMP is blocked so that will appear in the log file. The same if I try some SMB connections to the server, I'll know that will also fail. And also if I do a remote desktop connection, that's also disabled, so we should see that in the log file as well. So now that while they're doing that, if I come back to the server that I've enabled the logging on, and then refresh File Explorer, and we can see that our log file size has increased. So if we come into it, we can now see we have some items. So each line is its own drop packet. So if we're trying to see what's being logged, we can see it in here. So at the top, we've got a list of the column names. So we can see that we've got the date, then the time, and then the action, so these packets are dropped. We've then got the protocol, so this is over ICMP, and these ones are from UDP. And then we've got some TCP ones further down. We've then got the source IP address, so this is the server that made the connection request. And then we've got our destination IP, which is the server that I'm currently on. Then we can see any source ports. And then we've got the destination port. As it's ICMP, we don't actually have that. Then we've got the packet size and then some more information about the request. So I can see now we've got the ICMP packets from my ping request and they have been dropped as we expected. So if I come up to edit and then do find, I can search for 3389, which is RDP. And then I can see that our 3389 packets got dropped, which is why our RDP connection wasn't connecting. And also if I search for 445, which is SMB, we can see that our SMB packets also got dropped, which is why I couldn't connect to the file share. So this is a great way to see if connection attempts are being dropped by the firewall when you're unable to connect to remote services on a server. So that's how you can enable the Windows firewall logging feature and also how you can view the log file to see if any connections have been dropped.